Ever encountered one of these? In the biz, they call this a living nightmare. So we much prefer to go wireless whenever possible. The Wireless Distribution System, or WDS, is one such route on your Cisco products. It allows you to connect multiple access points completely free of wires. This provides a seamless experience for roaming the clients and managing multiple wireless networks. In this edition of Tech Talks, we'll demonstrate how to configure WDS on a WAP 125 and WAP 581. Next. In this example, we'll configure two WAP 581 devices. We can configure as many as four devices in WDS. Before we begin, please note that all Cisco WAP devices participating in WDS Link must be the same model. And there are a few other musts to bear in mind. They must use the same radio, either 2.4 or 5.0 gigahertz. In this example, we'll use 2.4 gigahertz and make sure that it's enabled. The WAP devices must be in the same IEEE 802.11 mode, and they must have the same wireless band selection. It's also important to have different SSID for the WAPs. The default selection can alternate between 20 or 40 megahertz, but this is not ideal for WDS. For this reason, we'll change the setting to 20 megahertz. This will provide a consistent wireless band. We also need to make sure our channel is manually set and not set to auto. For this example, we'll set it to one. Once again, we want all our WAP devices to be on the same channel. We'll click apply to save our changes. Okay, but what about when an access point goes rogue? To tackle those pesky instances, we'll make sure our security is up to snuff. Before we begin configuring the WAP, We'll click on System Configuration and then Security. We must make sure that Rogue AP Detection is enabled. In this example, we'll enable it for Radio 2 or 2.4 GHz. Then we'll click Apply to save. Now we'll move to the wireless bridge. Here, we can choose which WDS port we want to use. In this example, we'll use WDS 0. We'll select the port and click on Edit. For this example, We'll use Radio 2, 2.4 GHz, and click Enable. Now to connect our other access point, without having to untangle cords, of course. Under Remote MAC Address, we'll click the arrow to find the other WAP device. We enabled Rogue AP earlier so that we can discover the device by identifying the SSID that is broadcast and the MAC address assigned to that device. Here, we've found the second WAP device and we'll add it we can also choose our encryption. For this example, we'll use WPA Personal. Now, one more must here for those keeping count. Our WDS ID and our key must match on both web devices. Finally, we'll click Apply. This WAP is now configured. We also need to configure the settings on the second WAP device to match the first. We can check the status of the WDS by navigating to Monitor and selecting Wireless. The status of the WDS port we configured should read up once WDS has been configured on both WAPs. And that's the gist of configuring WDS on the WAP 581 and WAP 125. Now, I've got some detangling to do. See you next time for another edition of Tech Talks.